I think Christia Freeland's only use to the World Economic Forum is not her brilliant management or strategic skills. It's that she's plugged right into the Canadian government. And that scares me because how can you be loyal to two organizations that are sometimes at odds? I just well, think it's really inappropriate. Well, that is the point, isn't it? Uh, you have two different, so you have the national interest, the Canadian national interest, which is what she's supposed to be defending. That's, that's, that is what she, sh she should be standing up for. And then you have the, the interests of the World Economic Forum, which may be at odds with what, what is in our national interest. And uh, this, this, this does present a dilemma, and uh, the World Economic uh, the World Economic Forum says that you know the 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 um, uh, their board of trustees is comprised of people from a range of different uh, backgrounds, uh, from the political establishment, from uh, big corporations, uh, from civil society, and so on and so forth. Um, but you know it, it still begs the question: Why is the only actively serving politician uh, on the board of trustees from Canada? Um, it, w what exactly? What purpose is that serving? And uh, and I I feel that this this is not getting uh, the attention that it that it deserves. Mm -hmm. uh, now the Bo the World Economic Forum makes it very clear that you know the board of trustees don't get any compensation for 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 serving on the board, uh, and but but they provide guidance. Uh, they they provide guidance to the organization, uh, but what is that guidance? You know, what does that guidance look like? Um, and is that is that uh, in our national interest? That's the that's the most important question, I think. Yeah. You know, I would think that being finance minister, deputy prime minister, and she seems to be the foreign minister, at least in regards to Ukraine. Uh, I would think that sort of takes up uh, someone's time. So uh, I, I wonder why and how she can make time to serve the interests of a group of oligarchs. I find it odd. Maybe it's her relationship with George Soros that has carried her over. I don't know. But Rupa, I'll tell you this. It's very rare that Canadian journalists, other than independent sort of even fringe journalists, talk about the World Economic Forum. I know that Terry Corcoran of the Financial Post does. But other than him, you mentioned the World Economic Forum. And people will hiss at you and say, that's a conspiracy theory. The Great Reset is a conspiracy theory. They don't actually want you to own nothing and be happy, even though each of those phrases is their official thing. I, I don't, it's so weird how in certain polite society, if you even mention the World Economic Forum, they'll call you a crank, even though it's a real thing. We were just there. It's a real thing. Last yeah. word to you, Rupa. Why is yeah. it that no one even is, like, this is a very interesting thing. Even if you like billionaires and oligarchs and secret societies and Klaus Schwab, who is literally the son of a man who moved to Nazi Germany to run mm -hmm. a factory. I mean, I'm not blaming him for his father's affiliation with the Nazis, but he's like this classic supervillain, this Klaus Schwab, and he says the craziest things. Like surely just out of sheer spectacle, journalists would find this curious, but very few even talk about it. Yeah. So, so Ezra, I don't think we need to, you know, really even ha have a conspiracy theory here. It's not a conspiracy theory. It's all out in the open. Uh, their agenda is out in the open. Uh, they, they're very clear about where they're coming from, what they want to accomplish. Uh, they see themselves as uh, uh, agents of change. They, they see themselves as uh, powerful individuals trying to influence um, governments all across, all over the world. Where is the conspiracy here, right? Uh, but ultimately, I think what 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 uh, what is important is that does that serve the national interest? That's the question that we should be answering every single time that the World Economic Forum, um, you, you know, is a topic of discussion, or for that matter, the World Health Organization and the Pandemic Treaty, which is is you know, which is as you mentioned, they they also met this past week, and uh, the Pandemic Treaty now is, it's it's. It, to be honest with you, I mean, I'm nothing against international treaties. I think they serve they, they serve a purpose. But with the pandemic treaty, you really have to wonder, uh, an organization that got it so wrong on, on the pandemic, do we really trust them to come up with this global pandemic treaty to, to deal with the next pandemic? I know I, I, it raises a lot of questions for me, um, and it should, it should for a lot of people. That was an excerpt from my daily TV style show called The Ezra Levant Show. Each weekday, I do a monologue on the news of the day. Then I interview a fascinating guest. 
I read some fan mail or hate mail, depends on which I like more, and we end with a video of the day. You can get it all at rebelnewsplus.com.